game last week. It wasn't a vintage performance. And then it seems a number of the team, namely six players, went out against team orders on the Sunday night. There was a phone call, we think. They were told in, in some communication or other to come home. We think several of them did come home. We don't know all the ins and outs. What we do know is that this is not a happy camp nor a disciplined camp. Is this much ado about nothing? Um, well, in the era of professionalism and automaton um, rugby players, it's sort of heartwarming to know this carry-on still exists. <laughs> I thought it was over and done with. But, um, but I, it does have a serious side as well. And you know, Finn Russell isn't playing, I think, as a result of this. Uh, there are a number of others that, by their behaviour, would expect them to have got dropped. Scotland probably aren't in a situation where they, they can drop those players. And, uh, but um, I think it's, it's an issue, really, for management. Because if you've got players that are really you know, sticking the two fingers up at the you know, rules, agreed rules, especially with senior players, um, it means that they, they've lost them. And when the, you know, the coaches and the management lose the players, you can forget about it. It's, it's really tough on Gregor. Look, I've got, to, I've got to go on a bat for Gregor here. Like, these are men, these are lions, and you have a team rules. Now, let, let's switch this on ahead. Can you imagine us sitting here and talking about Johnny Sexton and, and uh, uh, Robbie Henshaw breaking team orders and going out for a few beers when they shouldn't? Like, it's just, it's just beyond thinking. Now, if we put this into perspective, Leinster won a Heineken Cup a few years ago, and they... They, they might have had a couple of beers afterwards in the change room. They basically had a gr an agreement to they're not drinking because they had another final seven days later. So that, that's, that's what Leinster did. So that's, that's, there's an example of professionalism, of behaviour. Like, that is just totally unacceptable. I mean, great, great, they have let their country down, but they have they've crucified Gregor and the staff in this. And I know from some, some very, very strong contacts within the staff, the staff feel very humiliated by this. And, the, and, and it is not... Everyone in Scotland and everyone around, around rugby should not be blaming Gregor. He is innocent in this because they are men that made their own decision to... And, and let's, let's put this another one on this. It's not the beers. That's one aspect. It's COVID as well. Mm. They went out into a bar with COVID. Now, they just won a trophy named after one of their former coaches who had died of, the COVID, of, of COVID in Rome during the pandemic. They just won that trophy that day. And yet they would go out and risk everyone and the game. Like, it's, it is beyond belief. Well, it's a trophy against Italy. You know, with all due respect, that's not something that you go out and celebrate on a Saturday night. And it, it's indicative of the culture that is within this Scottish team at the moment. And you can see it a mile off. We saw it on week two of the championship. And these are the leaders of the organisation. Yes. And these are the guys who are the idealistic of how you're meant to behave. If they turn up five minutes late for a meeting, they say, it's OK to be late. You're telling the coaches we don't really respect you. They're told not to go out on the weekend. And they do go out on the weekend. They're telling every younger guy coming up through the ranks that this is OK. Yes. I came in as a young fella. I copied Shane Horgan. I copied Brian O'Driscoll, Paul O'Connell. These are the guys you look to. They're the leaders. I'm going to do what they do. Mm. And that is just an atrocious example to be setting. I wonder, has Gregor Townsend missed an opportunity here in, in that should all six have been banished from the matchday squad? Yeah, I think, one, I disagree with Matt in some respect, that the reason that this behaviour is happening is because Gregor hasn't instilled it in them. He hasn't, they, he obviously, did, they, they don't have the respect of him. By the way, having a couple of beers after a game still happens. Yes. And that's fine. It is. And it's important. And 100%. that's the way it should have been. It should have been, you know, I think they're originally, because it was Ali Price's 50th cap, I think they were, you know, promised let's have a beer to celebrate yeah. and then it didn't happen. Then it kind of did and it got messy. We don't know the quite ins and outs of it. But there's nothing wrong with that. It can still, listen, rugby is a physical game, but it's also a mental game. And sometimes you need a little bit of unwind, even with the game seven days later. And that, won't impact your performance negatively and maybe positively. Mm -hmm. But for them, you know, to, to not, for him not to recognise that and to pull them in and say, listen, this is, we're all together here, we're having a beer and then it's up to bed. Um, for him not to do that and not to, for them not to be his advocates amongst the younger players as well. The best coaches, 
they don't have to speak to the senior players like that. They have that relationship, mm. and they know they 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 dictate what the team do on the pitch and off the pitch. They implement what the coach wants to do on the pitch and off the pitch. Yeah. Mm. That relationship in, doesn't in, in exist his, with those in, very senior no, players. No, I, I take that point, and yet I'm also thinking in his defence, he's effectively gone through a Six Nations campaign without Finn Russell. He did take a stand, and here we are two years on, and. It doesn't seem like the respect is forthcoming. It's one of the great problems that the, the national coach of Scotland has is a lack of competition within the group so that you can play that off as a coach. Like, like Ireland have in every position, probably except 10. We have got other players really fighting to take that position. You know, Hen Henshaw and Bundiaki as an example. Yeah. You know, and, and Gregor doesn't have that. Uh, uh, you, there, there's just not enough quality players. But therefore, you need your quality players to be quality leaders. We're back to Robbie's, Robbie's point before. Mm. And that is the issue. They, they, are, they are guaranteed a spot in the Scottish side. And sometimes that, and, and sometimes that makes them uh, have a sense of entitlement rather than a sense I have to, of stewardship. And I tell you what, it makes a lot of sense of the, you know, the indifferent performances over the course of six yes. stations. They have the talent. There's yeah. Actually, there's no doubt they have the talent. Yes, I'm, yeah, and I actually believe that more than ever as a result of, of the last number of weeks. The issue is they're upstairs. Well, we'll see. I mean, there may be a galvanising effect this week. That remains to be seen this afternoon.